Okay, hello and welcome everybody. My name is Waylon and I'm going to be doing a custom fee tutorial. So I'm going to demonstrate how to use the custom fee functionality of the Hedera token service. Um, right here, I just have a little bit of boilerplate code. Um, we get the client module from the Hashgraph SDK. I have my account ID and my private key coming from my .env file. Uh, and I have a, just an error check if it can't find my keys and then a success uh, console log if it does. Um, then we just configure the client for the testnet and we set the client's operating parameters to my private key and my account ID. So if we run this right now, It'll say environment variables configured successfully, which is great. It's what we wanted. Um, so one important thing to note is that we are using version 2.0.28 of the Hashgraph SDK. Um, now, if any of this base boilerplate is very confusing or you're already lost, I would encourage you to check out the environment setup video that Cooper did a little while ago. And we can link that in the description and uh, provide resources of how to access that because it goes over kind of setting up your environment to do this. So we're gonna be using, um, we're gonna be doing three kind of separate tasks here. I'm going to build a custom fee schedule. Then I'm going to build the token with that fee schedule. And then we're gonna log the ID. So fairly simple uh, to get right started right away. I'm going to need the custom fee constructor that we want to use. Now, what's interesting here is there's two. We could have a fixed fee or a fractional fee. Personally, I think the fractional fees are a little bit more interesting because they dynamically scale as they are a fraction of the transaction. So I'm gonna use that. However, the fixed fee is just as simple to configure and we have good documentation on that if you guys wanna check that out. So I'm gonna import the custom fractional fee constructor here and we are going to build, we're gonna call it an example fee. And this is going to await a new custom fractional fee. Now there are three things that we can set here. We can set our fraction parameters, so our numerator and our denominator. And I'm going to have my fee be 10% um, or one tenth, um, just because it makes math really easy and for the sake of the example. But keep in mind, you can set your fraction to be whatever you want. Um, and it's totally up to you, really customizable, which is kind of exciting. The last thing we need to set is the fee collector account ID. And this is just going to be the my account ID from my .env file right up here. So we're using that. We're going to set my account to be the fee collector account. And that is that is all you need to build a custom fractional fee. Um, so super simple so far. Really exciting that it is that easy. Now, the next thing is we are gonna actually need to pass this uh, example fee object that we have built into a token when we create a token. So right now, this is not associated with any sort of token. It just exists as a custom fee object. So in order to do that, I'm going to get the token create transaction constructor from the SDK. And right down here, I'm going to build an example token. We're gonna to call it a cookie token. And this is going to await a new token create transaction. Now, there are a couple parameters we can set here. Um, there are many optional parameters, but we're just going to do kind of the bare bones plus the fee parameter. Uh, so we want to not confuse anybody here. 
So I'm gonna call the token, I'm gonna to call it the cookie token as we have specified above. Now we also get to set the token symbol. And I'm gonna set this to be crunch for crunchy cookies. And now a couple other things we're gonna to need to set. One is going to be the decimals. I'm gonna arbitrarily set this to four because it seems appropriate and good. However, you can set the amount of decimals you want your token to be divisible by to any number you want, really, with some restrictions. Um, I'll, I'll look into what the restrictions are if anybody's really curious as to what they are. Um, next thing we're going to need to be able to set is we're going to set the initial supply. I'm going to set the initial supply equal to 10,000. Um, so we'll have 10,000 cookie tokens, which is going to be great. Who wouldn't want 10,000 cookie tokens? Next thing we're going to do is we're going to set the uh, custom fees. Now, this is where we uh, pass the example fee schedule into the custom fees uh, configuration parameter here with our setter and we're going to pass it um it takes a map so we're going to pass it in these square brackets so it's in an array and the reason for this is, is you can actually have many different custom fee schedules configured for a token so we're just using one but if you wanted to you could create multiple custom fee schedules um, and configure your token to be however sort of fee configurable you want. So we're gonna pass in the example fee. And we are also going to set the, I think that's it. That's all we need. All we need, all we need. Oh, we're going to set the treasury account. That's what we need. And this, just like the fee collector account, is going to be my account ID. And now we're all good and we can execute the client. Now, one reason we didn't have to execute the client up here is because this isn't putting any information on the distributed ledger. This is, we're just building an object that we will include in this constructor, which we will pass this information to the distributed ledger. Because after, after this uh, section of code gets executed, Hedera's testnet will have a this token on it. And we can get the token ID. We will have a, all sorts of things. However, uh, a fee schedule on its own, it doesn't need to be on the testnet because a fee schedule on its own doesn't really serve any sort of functionality until it's incorporated to uh, associated with a specific token, which we're doing right here. That's why we didn't have to execute the client previously, and we do here. Okay, awesome. So we have built a token, we have built a fee schedule, and we've built a token with our fee schedule. Everything's looking pretty good so far. Now, the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to get the token ID. Um, so this is fairly straightforward. Uh, we're just going to say, we're going to call this the cookie token receipt. And this is going to await the cookie token dot get receipt from the client. Perfect. And now we're going to make a cookie ID. And this is going to be equal to the cookie token receipt dot token ID. And we're gonna actually make this a string just so that we can have some ease of logging here. So we're gonna say the, we have created a cookie token with a custom fee and token ID of 
and we're going to pass in the cookie ID here. And we're going to give this a run. Environment variables configured successfully, and boom, we have created a cookie token with custom fee and, oops, spelling, and token ID of 0 0.0.2. Four four nine nine three six. So that's awesome. So that's going to wrap it up for this first kind of section, kind of the bare bones of configuring your custom fees and how you pass them to configure your tokens with the token create transaction. Now, in the next video, I'm going to demonstrate some transactions between a few different accounts and then logging the balances of the accounts. So we can actually see how the fees are applied and how they work in a, 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 a transaction of cookie tokens. Uh, so I look forward to seeing you all there if you're interested in that. And I will uh, see you all next time. Thanks for watching.